Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here doing one of our systems of equations videos. So we're solving a linear system of equations by substitution. So what we're doing is basically taking something for one of the variables and plugging it into another equation. So in my example that I've got right here, I have 5x plus 9y equals 24 for the first equation. My second equation I have y equals x minus 2. So this second equation is already solved for one of the variables. This is saying that y is the same as x minus 2. So what I can do is I can replace y with x minus 2. Why would I want to do that? Well, the reason is if I take x minus 2 and I put it in for y up here in the other equation, that will give me an equation on the top that only has x's in it. That'll allow me to solve for x. So let's do that and see what we get. So I'm going to substitute x minus 2 in for y in the other equation. So that will give us 5x plus 9 and then y becomes x minus 2 equal to 24. And the reason we like that is because if there's only x in this equation, now it's possible to solve this for x. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and distribute our 9. So we'll get 5x plus 9x minus 18 equals 24. I have some like terms I can combine here. So 5x plus 9x will give me 14x minus 18 equal to 24. And now this is just a linear equation with one variable, and so we just do our steps like we normally would to solve. So we'll add 18 to get the x term by itself first. Do it on both sides, and that'll give us 14x. 24 plus 18 will be 42. And since it's 14 times x, we do the opposite of times 14, which is divide 14. And it turns out 42 divided by 14 is actually a whole number. It turns out we actually get that x is equal to 3. So it looks like we're finished. We're only halfway finished, but the second half is a little bit shorter. We have an answer for x, but we also need an answer for y that works for both of these. Now, what I can do is I can take my x equals 3 and plug it back into one of these equations and get my answer for y. I am going to choose the bottom one because it is set up very nicely to do less work. So if I take my x equals 3 and I plug it into this bottom equation, that will give me y equals 3 minus 2. And that is very easy to finish. And there we know that y equals 1. Okay, now, your, whoever is uh, going over math with you, your instructor or your tutor or whatever, they may be okay with you writing the x and y value separately. They may want you to write as an ordered pair. So you might say x equals 3 and y equals 1 and circle your answer like that. Or they may want you to say 3 comma 1 like it's an ordered pair and we would graph possibly this 3 comma 1. All right, just something to keep in mind. Let's do another one. So here I have 6x minus 7y equals 44. My second equation is x equals negative 2y plus 1. So in this problem, we have that we have a substitution set up for x. I can replace x with this negative 2y plus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative 2y plus 1 and we're going to put it in for x in the other equation. Okay, so basically this second equation, if you want to think of it, it's saying replace x with negative 2y plus 1. So that's what we're doing in the first one. So let's do that. 6x becomes 6 times negative 2y plus 1. You really want to put parentheses around it when you substitute anything in, just to be sure if you need to distribute or anything like that. Be careful with your signs and all that. So we plugged in, we replaced x with negative 2y plus 1. Now I just distribute like before. So 6 times negative 2y is negative 12y. 6 times plus 1 would be plus 6 minus 7y equal to 44. Let's move up over here. So if I combine my like terms, that will give me negative 12y minus 7y is negative 19y plus 6 
equal to 44. So now I have my y's combined. Now I just need to solve for y, so I get the y term by itself first, subtract 6. That will give us negative 19y equal to 38. And then I'll have to divide by the negative 19 in front of y. And it turns out that 38 divided by 19 is 2. So since I have a positive divided by a negative, my y is actually negative 2. And now I can simply, once I get my y answer, I can go plug it back into one of these and get my x answer. I'm going to plug this into the bottom one since this is already solved for x. So that will give me x equals negative 2y. Go ahead and plug in my answer for y, which was negative 2, plus 1. So that will give me that x is, this will be a positive 4 plus 1, and I think that's 5. So our answer for this one is that x equals 5 and y equals negative 2. Or, if we prefer, we can write it as a pair, 5 comma negative 2.